Cap head screws are stuck on the back plate. Just light a small candle, put your screw over the candle, wait for the Loctite to melt, help the rust come loose. Now I've been trying with heat for 10 minutes and I couldn't get this cap head screw out of the back plate. So I've got a really old crappy Allen key, stuck it in there, got a small hammer, Gave it five taps with a small hammer, and then I didn't even need any heat. It just came straight out. So there you go. WD-40, heat, or even a tap with a hammer. MGT is brand new. So it seems like this S50 is completely brand new, uh, but it's full of rust. So let's put some alcohol in there. Look at the rust. Okay, I've been trying for two or three days to get this head off. Uh, we soaked in WD-40, all six screws. We hit it with the hairdryer. We tried using a small candle. Uh, in the end, it was, I think, a combination of uh, heat, uh, using the good Hobeo tools. I couldn't do it by hand, but I found this uh, tent peg in the park. Once we got the tent peg through, we had some extra leverage and uh, all six bolts came out very easily. Uh, no damage to my tip of the tool. That's important. So let's open it up and see how the uh, top of the piston looks. Okay. Well, the button head looks brand new. Uh, I've already verified that the glow plug works. So that's good. Now let's have a look at our, uh, our piston. Okay, now the top of the piston looks okay, there's a bit of discoloration, yeah there's a bit of dirt on there, could be rust, uh, we know that aluminium doesn't rust but um, something could have fallen on there and settled there. Wow, this thing looks brand new inside! Um, probably after the engine was used. So if we look at the sides of the sleeve, there's a lot of rust there. So I think that the piston could be dirty, something's just fallen on there. We'll definitely have to get that out and do a clean. Uh, the thing I'm most worried about is scratching the sleeve and scoring the sides of the piston. So I might do a little bit of a clean of that sleeve before I push the piston up and try and get the sleeve out. I need to get the sleeve out, I need to lift the piston up, I need to get the rod uh, off the pin, I need to get this crank out, it is so rusty. Okay, so this sleeve is not coming out. Uh, I tried the old zip tie trick, but uh, it's practically a guillotine with this side exhaust. Um, so I'm going to try with a paddle pop stick, which is much stronger than a zip tie. Uh, I'm going to use the hairdryer first just to heat it up and uh, see if we can get this sleeve out safely. Whoa, super crunchy. Just came back from uh, my friend's house, Roberto, and he's given me a spare case, uh, the Pro BK50. Now, one the reason we need this is because it's got good bearings in it. Uh, so we'll either take the bearings out or we might just leave the bearings in and use the whole case. But if we use this engine case, uh, we've got a problem. This block has got a damaged sleeve and a damaged piston in there. So we'll need to get that out first. Maybe we'll try and pry it out all in one go. 
uh, using the exhaust port, maybe smashing that piston down first and uh, giving it a clean. So in order to get that uh, piston down, what we might do is just put a uh, back of a, a screwdriver in there and uh, see if it, we can just knock it out. So put some protection on there so we don't destroy the piston completely. And then we'll just, just tap it. Okay, let's see how we're going. All right, yep, looks like that piston came all the way down. Okay, it's sticking out the bottom there. We just gave it one hard tap with the screwdriver and uh, the piston has fallen down. Let's see if it comes out. Yep. All right, so that piston is, uh, that's had it. It's all cracked. Um, definitely there's a bit of conrod remaining on there. Uh, we've got some big scratching on the piston. So all of this is trash. And it looks like there's some big gouging. Some big gouges in there. Yep, even here as well. So uh, we're not going to use this. But uh, we'll get that sleeve out and then we'll see if the case is still good. I suspect the case is still really good. There's lots of fragments of metal in there. So we're going to have to clean those out. So we've got an engine case and we want to get the sleeve out. Okay. Now we've got no crankshaft, so we can't rotate anything. We've got no con rod, we've got no piston. So there'll be no rotation to force the sleeve up. Uh, we're not going to use screwdrivers and pry. We've got nothing to lever against and uh, we don't want to crack these fins. So it doesn't leave too many options. Um, we can try and push it with a uh, chopstick or something from the bottom, but uh, we might snap it. Uh, we can give it a go first, just see what happens. So I'll get a chopstick. Mm, too much flex. So maybe if we go from the top, we can grab this... Uh, so we're getting our, our biggest ferrule going from the top. Now will that grab? I guess if we open it up and it grabs the bottom of the sleeve, that will work. So we'll try with the biggest one. Oh, look at that, the sleeve came out. Okay, so it's all connected up. And so we're just slowly bringing the sleeve up. Slowly turning clockwise, bringing the sleeve up. Bringing the sleeve up. There it is, we can see a bit more. We can see an inlet port. So we've got even pressure on the top of the engine case. No heat required. No chemicals. Just bring that sleeve straight out. Okay, that's done. We've got a nice engine case, just needs a bit of a clean. We've got our sleeve. I just noticed, uh, besides the engine being dirty, that there's a lot of metal fragments still in there. And uh, after removing the sleeve, we've got some big, big gouges. Um, but the good news is it's it's on the, the opposite side of the sleeve. So it probably won't matter. Uh, we can put a little bit of silicon in there um, if we're concerned about... Um, situation with losing any any pressure any leaks but um, I don't think that'll be the case because the the piston is on the inside of the sleeve nowhere near the back of the um, the back of the sleeve so what I might do is remove these bearings and give them a good clean because the front one's not moving too much 
and uh, either way this rear bearing is going to go to my engine or my front bearing will go in here because this one's not moving so let's give them a clean that'll give us a good chance to get all the, the metal shavings out of here and uh and give the the case a good proper clean front bearing and we've got a rear bearing what we're going to try and do is get the front bearing out first No heat. We've got our Chinese motorcycle bearing puller kit. We'll grab the uh, the small selection from the kit. Um, the ferrule. We'll get the second smallest one. Oh no. Okay. There's our bearing. So we're gonna try and get the rear bearing out now. Uh, the rear bearing, it's what you call a blind removal. Uh, you don't have access to both sides of the bearing, like the front. Uh, with the front, just stick the ferrule in, expand the uh, the prongs, and uh, you could grab the bearing and, and get it out. But with the rear bearing, uh, it's going to be a blind removal. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that, as we expand the prongs of the ferrule, It'll, it'll just grab the groove where the bearing meets the case. So if we can get that groove, maybe we can get it out. Let's have a crack. Hammer. We got the good bearing out. Got the barbecue. We got the gloves. We got the chopping board. The Pro 50 BK. We've got two bearings. We've got a uh, crankshaft. Okay, so the front bearing we are reusing. The rear bearing was donated to me in this engine case, uh, which I've just given a clean. This engine case is a little bit nicer than mine, so we'll be using that one. Uh, I've been watching some YouTube videos of how to put the bearings into a glow engine. I don't have any special tools. I don't have the Huddy bearing installer remover. Uh, my bearing puller is only for taking bearings out. There's no way to use it to put bearings in. Uh, the tolerances are just just not there so I'm going to close the lid on this barbecue get some heat in there and uh, well, let's let's throw the engine case in there first uh, let's go and put our bearings in the freezer and we'll go from there okay we just took the bearings out of the freezer got one bearing on the shaft We've got the other bearing seal facing down so that we're ready to go been raining so much, so much smoke. All right, so we got the rear bearing half in, and we've got the front bearing half in by Crooked. So we're gonna have to take both out and start again. So without any heat, we're gonna try and pull the bearing into position. So what I've done is, I've got the medium sized ferrule and I've put it through and I've got the bearing in there so I'll show you what we've done so far I've got the bearing in almost in position I've got the ferrule there 
we're going to try and pull the bearing down into position. All right, so the bearing uh, didn't go in all the way and it was crooked. So we've removed the front bearing. I've already got the rear bearing in. So now we've got the case in the barbecue. It's getting really hot in there now. Uh, maybe around 400. We've got the bearing in the freezer. So we're gonna throw the bearing onto the shaft. Hopefully it just slides straight in, but if it doesn't, I've got a backup plan this time. I'm gonna uh, rest the engine case over the side of the block or timber. I'm gonna put the ferrule on top and uh, just give it a whack with a hammer. And uh, hopefully that front bearing goes in. Uh, I'm not gonna record it because it's too dark and I don't have my tripod here, but I'll let you know how it goes. Well, it rained, I lost all my heat in my engine, tried to hammer the front bearing in, and all that happened was it went in crooked and the rear bearing fell out. I got absolutely soaked, and uh, I'm not happy. I'm gonna have to go and pull the front bearing out again, and uh, I'm gonna have to think of a new plan. So I heated up the case with a small candle, and the front bearing went straight in. There it is, it's in. Now I'm just heating up the uh, the middle of the case so we can slide the rear bearing in. I'm having more luck with a small candle than I am with a huge barbecue. So in the end, we got the front bearing in using a small candle and uh, just pushing the case down with the bearing on the board. We got the rear bearing in finally, and we just use the hairdryer and uh, a little bit of uh, HPI after run oil. Uh, and then we just hit it with a small hammer from the back using a screw, uh, put the screw over the crankshaft and uh, gave it a couple of whacks. Uh, the engine was probably 80 degrees C, which is too hot to touch. And uh, the bearing just slid straight into position. So uh, it's time to reassemble the rest of the engine and then we can start building the truck. Okay, so we put a bit of after run oil in these bearings. It's a little bit noisy, but it's not too bad. I think that'll be good. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time to reassemble the engine, now that we've got the bearings in the case. So I've just pushed the sleeve down in here. Now, this is a little bit hard to see, but there's some metal flaking off in the inlet port. Can just see a bit of metal just in there now if that metal falls down and uh, hits the top of the piston that's game over for this engine so I really need to chip that metal flake away uh, otherwise it's bye-bye engine and we'll be looking for a new piston and possibly a sleeve this is what I'm talking about little bits of metal. I've got to get rid of them all. Finally sounding good. Wow, there's a lot of pinch here. Wow, that's incredible. So much pinch. <laughs> 